Hello my fellow fasting friends, it's Jackie and today I'm excited to talk to you about the importance of a clean fast and my experience with it and how I implement it into my fasting journey so that hopefully I can encourage you on your fasting journey as well. a million times but I just want to share with you guys that all of my information started with fast feast repeat I have actually read Jen's first book delay don't deny I am now reading Michael Mosley's um, the fasting diet I think it's called there's a long subtitle I just got that from the library I'm really enjoying that as well but he has a lot of information on the science of fasting the the data that backs up how good it is for you and the supporting evidence that it's a healthy way of life and I fully suggest that um, you don't just take my take. I'm not trying to really educate you guys so much as share my experience because I certainly am not an expert in that. I feel so free on this lifestyle that I want the entire world to do it because it feels selfish to not share it. So as I'm sharing this, I have been fasting for 23 weeks. That's since the end of June. It's the end of November now, five months in, and I still love it. I have loved it every single day. The, the beginning, of course, was rough and there were adjustments, but now I feel phenomenal. I have energy. I feel great. It's not a struggle every single time to get from one fast to the other. I can easily, like no worries, get 16, 18 hours every single day. And of course there are times where there are temptations, but I'm not sitting there like white knuckling it and feeling awful. And I think a huge part of that is the clean fast. It not only makes my fasting easier, but I receive more benefits by doing a clean fast. And that's what I'm gonna share with you. Chapters four and five from Jen's Fast Feast Repeat talk about why and how you do a clean fast. And I'm gonna give you the overview right now and share with you how I implement it into my life. So when you're fasting and you do a clean fast, one of the largest benefits is that you have extended periods without your body releasing insulin to help digest your food. So when your body releases insulin, it is in response to sweet tastes or food or food flavors. Your body tastes that stuff and it releases insulin in response to help break down the food that you get. The problem is even if you don't get the food, your body has already sent the insulin and is waiting for food. And when that happens, you are not gonna tap into your fat stores, which is gonna prohibit you from losing weight. You're gonna feel hungry because your body's waiting for that food to fulfill the sensation that the sweet or the flavoring brought upon yourself. So that's why it is a problem to have Diet Coke. That's a, why it's a problem to have flavored water or lemon juice in your water or artificial sweeteners, even if they're zero calorie, is your body, your brain, your tongue work together it tastes something and it says, oh, we're gonna eat. Let's release the insulin so that we're ready. When it comes, we're gonna break it down. And when there's nothing to break down, the insulin is sitting there. And that means your body is not gonna tap in your fat stores for energy, it's gonna wait. And then you're gonna feel hungry and you're gonna be white knuckling it until your fast time is over and you're into your eating window. And it's just gonna be kind of a vicious cycle. Additionally, you can have things like bone broth or cream in your coffee that maybe don't have the same insulin response as a sweetness would, but you're not gonna be breaking down your proteins. You're not gonna be using your own body's ketones for energy. And putting anything in your body that is food or food-like or flavored is really gonna prohibit the access of fat stores because you have the insulin. It's going to prohibit your breaking down of old cells and proteins in your body called autophagy that helps get rid of all the waste in your body, the loose skin, the dead cells, that's gonna be prohibited if you're taking in protein and using that to break down instead of your body's proteins. Insulin is anti-fat burning. So when you have insulin in your body released, you're not gonna burn fat. It's really simple. And like I said, I'm not an educator or an expert in this. I'm trusting what I've read. I'm on my, actually I'm reading um, obesity code and I'm reading the fast diet just to get more information. I love information. That's why I like to share information is because I'm an information junkie and everything that I'm reading shares the importance of prohibiting the excessive release of insulin. Not only does the constant release of insulin make it less effective, but it makes it less pleasurable or easy to get through your fast. So imagine I have a diet Coke. 
I love McDonald's Diet Cokes. That was actually something that was a snack of mine that was a freebie. Anytime I've dieted, I've always relied kind of on Diet Cokes or flavored coffees or even eventually once I did break away from Diet Colas when I was pregnant with my son, I had a real problem drinking Fountain Pops. I started drinking flavored waters, flavored, um, you know, I even in my grocery hauls, I've shared the Belle V from Aldi. I still love them, but I'd get the tangerine or the lemon lime or grapefruit and I would drink those as my freebies and I didn't feel like I was eating, but it felt like a treat. So that is something I've always used as a tool in my dieting toolbox. However, once I've read this book, I'm seeing that when I take a sip all day long, I may not actually be consuming calories, but every sip that I take my body is releasing insulin. And in response, I'm not going to access the fat stores that I could have by fasting. And I have seen tremendous benefits from a clean fast. Not only is it easy for me to get through the fast, for the most part, like I said, everyone's gonna have temptations and harder days, but for the most part, I don't feel like I struggle with fasting. I feel like it's enjoyable and effective but I'm also able to access fat stores. My body is a completely different body than it was the end of June, and I'm loving the transformation and the progress, and I cannot wait to share with you guys at six months. I'm taking every single week the same picture and the same clothes, and I can't wait to share with you guys my six month transformation that's coming, and I'm so excited to share that with you guys. But clean fast has been integral in my success. And I highly encourage, if you want more information, read Jen Stevens, Fast, Feast, Repeat. There's so much information. It really is focused on chapters four and five. I'll share with you what I do drink, what I had to give up drinking, and the good and the bad, according to Jen. The good news is anything that you don't have during your fast, you can still have in your eating window. So if you give up Diet Coke and your 18 hour fast, you can still have it in your eating window. That's a choice that you get to make. But just because I say no during the clean fast doesn't mean you can't have it in your eating window. And there's freedom in that. So the things that I had to give up to maintain a clean fast were the Diet Colas, flavored sparkling waters. I still love them. I still drink flavored sparkling water in my eating window, but now I drink unflavored sparkling water. It took a little bit of adjustment, but I do drink those in my fast. I had to give up, um, this was the hardest one for me. I had to give up hazelnut and French vanilla and creme brulee flavored black coffee. I love black coffee. I've drank black coffee every single day since I was probably 19 or 20. And having it flavored was really my go-to. If you've seen my grocery hauls, you know that's pretty much what I would always buy was a flavored version and I had to switch to like a breakfast blend or a bold or a mild and basic. So you can have notes. If the bean has a note of cocoa or a note of maple, that's like completely natural and it still has the overall bitter profile of black coffee, but you don't want anything but 100% bean. No flavors added. So now that I told you what I had to give up, what do I include in my fasting window? I have iced water. I always have iced water ready, made, and available. I love to drink ice cold water. So when I have a tumbler that's pre-made and ready to go, it's perfect and delicious and highly enjoyable. Also, I find that if I feel super hungry in my fast, if I take many gulps of water, that, that feeling goes away. A lot of times it's more thirst than hunger and I am learning to tell the difference and it really can help me feel that full feeling if I'm trying to get to a 24 hour fast and I'm struggling a little bit. Two, I drink black coffee all day long. I I don't have any issues with sleep 95% of the time if I drink caffeine all day long. Um, I do feel the older I'm getting, I'm seeing a little bit more of an impact from drinking caffeine late. But for the most part, I'm still fine with it. Someday I'm sure I'll have to go decaf later. But I have hot black coffee or iced black coffee all day long. One big thing that has helped me with that is I have a Panera subscription. This isn't sponsored or anything, but I love it. It's $8.99 a month and I can get a coffee every two hours from Panera and they have a light roast, a dark roast, and they have black iced coffee. So I can get any of those every two hours and I live very close to a Panera. And thankfully my local Panera just started letting us bring our own cups in again with COVID that was a no-no for a while. So I don't even have to, to worry about the environmental impact. I can bring my own cups in and drink their coffee for $9 a month. Um, 
like I said, this isn't sponsored, but I do have a referral link below where if you sign up, you get a free month and I get a free month. I think that's what it is. I'll put the details down below, but I absolutely love my Panera subscription. And if you live close, $9 a month for unlimited black coffee really can help you in the fast. And I still, as I mentioned, I do drink sparkling water. I just drink the unflavored version. And I also keep Topo Chico's on hand. There's a number of sparkling water brands that are out there and different people have different favorites. I found Topo Chico at my local Walmart and I really like it. So I keep a box on hand. It's in a glass bottle. It feels fancy. And I save them only for my 500 calorie down days only because they're expensive and it feels fun. I know other people drink tea. I personally don't like tea. I think it tastes like watered down coffee. Like it's just not strong enough. Um, and then other people also drink hot water. I haven't been able to try that and enjoy it yet. Um, but people do it. Also, people I have seen in the Facebook groups, support groups for Fast Feast Repeat, Delay Don't Deny. If you're not a part of those, I'll link those below. You do have to read at least one of her books to join her groups, but I'll link them below. They're wonderful resources, huge encouragements, people share before and afters and great stories. I highly recommend you check those out, get connected, share your story, get feedback. They're just wonderful. Anyways, I have seen people in those Facebook groups share that they actually take, whether iced or um, hot, they take their black coffee and they blend it and it makes it frothy. So you just feel like you're getting something a little different. I've never done that myself. The header of the Facebook group, if you join the Delay Don't Deny Facebook group, it has like half a million people in there, but the header of it shares. Here is allowed, here's the maybe, and here is the no. So I'm gonna go through the list really quick. It's also on page 62 of Fast Feast Repeat. But the yes, as I mentioned, unflavored water, unflavored black coffee, unflavored plain tea that comes from actual leaves. So that's gonna be like a green tea, a black tea. There's mineral water, club soda, and sparkling water without flavors. So those are the yeses, those are what I focus on, and they work really well. I can attest that getting that doing the unflavored plain stuff your body can adapt and it makes fasting easy i am not white knuckling it most of the time my 500 calorie down days some days a little bit of white knuckle but it's a sacrifice and then i feast the next day and i appreciate it the maybes uh she put peppermint essential oil as long as it's food grade and used very sparingly for breath it's not even a yes it's a maybe that's something you have to consider and see how your body adjusts i've never tried it even though i have uh really struggled with keto breath if you are interested in seeing what i did to um help my keto breath you can check out this card right here but it wasn't peppermint oil just because if it's in the maybe i'm just ignoring it Herbal teas with bitter pr flavor profile. So the herbal might mess with the bitterness and still trick your body into releasing insulin. I don't really know much about it. I don't drink tea, as I mentioned. You can do more research for yourself. Vitamins and supplements. So you definitely wanna work with what your doctor has prescribed to you. And if I take vitamins or supplements, I do them in my eating window just to be safe. But you have to work out what works best for you. Obviously, there are some nuances and some time importance sometimes with things that you have to take. So I can't really give you guidance and Jen can't tell you exactly what works for you and your specific situation because this book is written for the broad audience. These are definite no's. Food, flavored water, fruit, sweet, or matcha teas, diet sodas, artificial or, or natural flavorings. So that means like adding lemon juice into your water still is a flavor, even if it's natural, even if it's not artificial, it is still adding a flavor and telling your body you're about to eat. Bone broth, broth, bouillon cubes, fat, including coconut oil, butters, cream, creamers, milk, or milk substitutes, and supplements or pre-workouts such as collagen. So gum and mints are just out. And that is because it is the same as sipping. If you are constantly chewing a minty gum with sweetness, even if it has like a zero calorie sweetener or an artificial sweetener, you're constantly getting that flavor and the sweetness and your body thinks, okay, we're gonna eat. And those are all no's, like never okay. Any of those to be considered a clean fast. They're all okay in your eating window. Take them then. If there's something that you need, take it then. But the clean fast really focuses on just having unflavored, plain black coffee, water, plain bitter teas, and mineral or club waters. 
the nice thing is the yes list is so small it makes it really easy to know if you're doing what you're supposed to do or not so let me know below what would be the hardest for you to give up do you do a clean fast i would love to know that in the comments below so if me mentioning having keto breath and having different ways to deal with that is of interest to you because you deal with the same thing you can check out this video right here where i share with you how i am tackling keto breath thank you so much for watching ciao down and ciao